Good morning! So last night I was watching a few artist vlogs on YouTube and I love artist vlogs because you can sort of have them on while you're doing stuff or to sit there with and watch if you need inspiration or motivation. I was thinking why don't I start my own artist vlog? I've thought about it for quite a while but thought oh, it might be too boring because I don't just sit and do like drawing and painting and stuff but I don't think it would be so I'm gonna try it I'm gonna start doing a weekly artist vlog which will be lots of behind the scenes and everything so we're starting this morning which is today is the Monday the 13th of September 2021 I've just been looking at my diary I've got lots of parent teacher interviews via zoom today for my daughters but I've also got to do some painting and go and pick up some supplies. So I've just had my coffee. It's time to get up. It's about 8.30. I was supposed to get up an hour ago. And let's get this day started. This is Flossie. She's not normally allowed on the bed, but in the morning when I'm having my coffee, she's allowed. Hello, Flossie. Say hello, everybody. She likes to have a little rest, don't you, Flossie? This is my little makeshift home studio while we're in lockdown. It's just a little nook in a room. Okay, it's nine o'clock. Um, I've already had to rearrange my day because I didn't get up and go to my studio early like I had planned. I don't know what it is the night before. I always say, yeah, get up early, go to the studio at seven o'clock and then in the morning I'm like, yeah, right, I don't want to do that. A new collection of originals coming out on the 1st of October, which is my Little Darlings collection. Um, the first one I've done, so she's super cute. 10 of the 12 of my paintings are going to be this size, which I think is 20 by 25 centimeters. And just the two are gonna be that smaller size. So they're two square ones and the rest will be that um, rectangle. And I'm very excited because I'm going to actually do limited edition prints for this collection as well, which I haven't done. Um, my my last collection, which was my first official solo exhibition, I just did the originals. This time I'm gonna do prints as well and also some greeting cards, but they'll be super limited edition. I'm actually thinking like 25 of each. The prints will be A5 size, so quite small, which is probably slightly smaller than that, just because I thought, I'm gonna try it. This morning I have been to, I've done my first round of parent teacher interviews. I went to Spotlight to pick up my Calico. Spotlight's about half an hour away from here. Because we're in lockdown at the moment, I have to do click and collect. So I think I got the right Calico. I use Calico for my wheat bags. I um, cut my Calico to size, send it to my printers in Melbourne, and then they print like a whole sheet, which usually has three wheat bags and one little mini rice bag. So that's just an example there. And then I get it back and then I cut them all up and sew them all together. So I've done that. Then I just went to my studio, dropped the fabric off, put some things out at the roller door because I sell secondhand stuff on Marketplace as well. So there's some things that need to be picked up. Then back in the little studio, just replying to some emails for wholesale orders. Then I'm just having a little quick look at some reference images I've saved. With this collection, it's all portraits, so it's 12 different uh, faces I'm doing. And it's really not in a specific style. I haven't been painting a lot the last few years, nowhere near as much as I should have been because I've been more focused on my handmade products that have been really popular. So this whole collection is all about me really exploring my style, especially with faces and seeing sort of what really resonates with me. So I'm just doing a few different options and ideas and I've got a whole varied range of um, inspiration images just to use as little references. I never, I'm sort of not to copy or anything, but just sort of things that, like I might like how someone's done the eyes in a painting or the hair or just the mixed media. Uh, composition of the whole painting so it's always good to have a little point of reference I think and I'm using my Posca pens for the start of this one it's really hard working from this little makeshift studio that I've literally set up in my oldest daughter's bedroom she's away studying in Sydney at the moment so I've just set up a little tiny little nook but most of my paints and painting supplies are at my studio 
and it's really freaking hard to work from this space. I've literally just set it up uh, a couple of days before this video was being filmed and I just don't. It's only one little table. I don't have hardly any paints. I've got these cheap crappy acrylic paints except for my couple of um, Matisse paints there and yeah it's it's fine I'm making it work I once this lockdown's over I'll be going back to working from my studio full-time I can go there at the moment because I have an e-commerce store and we're allowed to go to work if we have an e-commerce store but because my kids have been um, stuck at home doing remote learning I just I prefer to sort of only go into the studio for a few hours and spend the rest of my days working from home. Even though they're old enough and quite capable of staying at home by themselves, I much prefer to be present for them. As you can see, I really embrace the old finger painting with this painting. I don't know what it is about finger painting, but I just love it. Especially when I'm feeling a bit disconnected, either with myself or with my art. Getting the fingers dirty with some paint and just slapping it on is something that I find really relaxing and um, quite meditative. So it's always a good fun thing for me to do. I really just jumped into this painting. I didn't start it with any preconceived ideas. Uh, I knew I wanted it to be a girl, sort of standing off to the side a bit, but that's pretty much it. And I'm quite liking how it's coming along. Obviously, I'm really, uh, I'm not doing lots of careful lines and stuff at this point because I'm going to fill the back in, the back, uh, the background in quite a lot, and. Here I am adding some wings because I thought, oh, let's make her a little like a butterfly girl with the idea of one of the quotes, the typography prints I've just recently created, which is a Maya Angelou quote. And that says, oh, let me hang on. Let me remember what it says. Okay, got it. It's we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. That really struck me, that one. It's so true, especially when you look at people who are quite successful, you, you only see them now. You don't see what they've been through to get where they are. So I think it's a really important one to remember that the journey to become who we want to be, our best selves, actually um, is a process and you've got to respect that journey and embrace that and celebrate the journey because the hard stuff is what gets us to the good stuff. I really think that. So now I'm just adding some of my Matisse flow in the pink. Matisse, uh, the Derivian Matisse paints are probably my favorite. There's a few other brands that I haven't tried yet that I've heard are really good, but this brand is what I generally work with. I have a mix of the flow, which is more um, thinner paint, uh, as well as the structure paint, which is really beautiful and textural. And I just love this brand. I've always used it and it's the majority of paints I have at my studio, my proper studio, not my little home nook studio. So love this pink a lot. Okay, I've just finished my parent-teacher interviews and it's 4.30 and I'm exhausted and I've done a couple of progress layers on my latest little painting and now I'm having a nap before I go cook dinner. Hey, it's Tuesday and I've just realised I have not vlogged at all today 
It's 5.30 in the afternoon. I had, look at my dining table. It's literally my slash home office at the moment while we're in lockdown. It's such a mess. It's doggy snoring on the floor though. So I was so stressed this morning because I had a Zoom interview with uh, Leonie Dawson, who is an Australian entrepreneur who is amazing and wonderful. And I was so nervous. I couldn't think of anything else all morning. I was just trying to prepare. After that, it went really well. So now I just have to edit the video, which was just a Zoom recording. So I need to cut out the first part where we were just chatting. And I have gone to my studio just to check that my wheat got delivered, which it did today. I've got several orders that need to get made and sent out. So we'll be working at the studio in the morning doing some hours on production and I, right now I'm just so I think I was so excited about this interview and then it was done and I'm just under my blankie watching YouTube good morning it's Wednesday and it's 8 40 a.m. having my morning coffee I forgot to take my makeup off yesterday I hardly ever wear it so I always forget I'm just waiting for a delivery to come at nine o'clock then I'm going to jump in the shower and we're off to the studio today we've got lots of production stuff to do we need to go make some wheat bags and send off some artwork that was purchased online over the weekend but first coffee on my way to the studio I stopped off at the little coffee van which my friend a very good friend of mine actually runs so it's so nice I can pop in for a quick hello to her then at the studio I've just got some boxes that I'm using for my uh, painting order and one of my wholesale orders so my studio is at Reader and Frank Creative Studios, which is a co-working space that my partner and I actually set up. So we rent the factory, but we run the business. So we have several people that rent sub-lease sub spaces off us. Uh, my studio is up the top on the mezzanine level, just going past the amazing Ameldo studio and then Judd Savage. And then it's me. So it's a bit of a hot mess at the moment. Um, I need to spend some time cleaning it up. But this is my space and I love it. I love being in here. I love working from here. The side that you can see behind me now is my art side. So that's where all my paints and all stuff is stored. And then on the other side is where I store all my raw materials and stock for my handmade products. So now I'm just filling the wheat bags for my wholesale order. So as you can see, and like I said earlier, I get my artwork printed onto Calico. I then sew them into wheat bags and fill them with organic wheat. So currently I just store all my wheat bag designs in one tub. I used to have a tub for each design, but it took up so much space and found that it really was unnecessary because I've learned that it's better not to pre-make heaps of my wheat bags because wheat is not good if it's sitting, um, sitting for ages. So I now just keep them unsewn ready to go and I create them as I get orders so in these covers I've got my other fabric so this fabric I designed and also had printed in Melbourne uh, these are my deluxe wheat bags so they're long and skinny people who prefer a more patterned wheat bag like these ones and I just have to show you my beautiful fabric vintage fabric cupboard I love this cupboard it's full of my beautiful vintage fabrics oh, they're so pretty And I don't have any set weights for each wheat bag or anything. I literally just go by uh, feel as I'm making, which I used to have weights like, okay, so this design is this weight, blah, blah. But I found it took so much longer just having to weigh. So I just go by feel. Uh, it's usually me or if I'm getting my partner to help me and, you know, he's getting, he's pretty good at it now. Uh, so here I am just making a dream catcher wheat bag for one of my Shopify orders. 
super simple straight edge stitching here. I put my little tag that I make myself. So I get these little tags printed on the edges when I'm getting my wheat bags printed just to so no space goes to waste on the sheet of fabric. And then I do the edges um, just with fabric stiffener or Mod Podge just to stop the little edges of the tags from fraying. And it's a really cute way to make my own tag and then I just fold my little wheat bags inside out I've been doing this for so long I'm pretty quick quick at it it looks easy here folding them inside out but let me tell you it is fiddly as oh all done Can you see why I haven't had a lot of painting time over the last few years? I tell you, these guys are time consuming to make, but they are just my biggest seller. Like, they really are. And I thought, I really started swaying back to my painting you know, when COVID hit last year and we were in lockdown and I had all this quiet time. I really, it really made me think, okay, what is your priority? So I almost discontinued these wheat bags, but I decided not to do that. I decided that I'm still doing them and now I do them and I love them again but they're not they don't generally take up the majority of my time because I just make it very intentional that my top priority is painting so at the start of the week that is what I do um, and these guys get made when I have some hours for production time I also get my little tags made with wheat bags in Australia you have to have a warning label because they are a fire hazard so I, I just get the double sided, um, actually no, the foldable business cards printed and then cut them in half. So I just sort of, when they're printed, they come double and then I cut them in half and that is them. Now I'm just wrapping one of my website orders. So I really try and keep any plastic packaging down to minimum or none. I got these cool postcards printed on 100% recycled cardstock as well as my business cards from an amazing Melbourne printer who are fully environmentally friendly and I love them. So I use them for all of my packaging stuff and yeah, if I can avoid a plastic bag, I absolutely will. I also love to write little personal notes on each order just to say thank you for shopping local and supporting my business. For posting, I used the Hero Packaging compostable mailers, which are a great alternative. However, they're still not, you know, they're still not 100% awesome, unless they're actually composted. I don't know that it makes a huge difference. So I am sort of looking future-wise, maybe I change to box mailers. The only thing with that is it's a lot more expensive to post in Australia with the box and a little satchel. So looking at my options with that at the moment, and now we're just packing up this wholesale order. So again, with this, um, the craft paper in here that is kept from packages that I have received. So I will always reuse any packaging that I get as much as possible. Gee, I really slammed that postcard in there, didn't I? Get in there, thank you, God. And yes, sewers, I am the worst human on the planet. I am using my fabric scissors to cut cardboard. Unacceptable, I know, but I have unfortunately damaged these scissors. So my protection of them has gone to basically zero and I'm a terrible person for it. <laughs> Thank you. 
filling up my tape dispenser with cello tape, which is much nicer. So I just printed my labels. Now I have bought a thermal label, but I haven't set it up yet. I've got to get a little connector for my laptop. And I've just realized I didn't pack this guy. So I sold this original painting on the weekend through the Finders Keepers online marketplace website. So I was so excited. It's the second original I've sold on that website in just over a week. Yay! I've got to pack this bad boy or girl. As I start and sell more of my original art, I'm going to have to really figure out a better box packaging solution because at the moment I'm just kind of using recycled boxes and I'd like to get some really nice boxes made for my artwork because I do generally just make art in a, a specific sizes. I've probably got like four sizes apart from the really big ones so I don't think it'd be too hard to organize some nice packaging for them. Uh, again, like with my packaging paper, any bubble wrap that happens to arrive at my doorstep with orders, I will keep some of just to use for my own packaging. And this is because I absolutely refuse to buy bubble wrap brand new. I just refuse to. But in some cases, I actually do need to, to use it. It's probably a good idea for me to get a little sticker made that says I only use recycled bubble wrap. I don't know, maybe. Um, yeah, I just want this to be well protected so it doesn't get damaged in transit. And these little beastie packets full of air, plastic packets, aren't they the worst thing in the world? Um, unfortunately, we got quite a few of these when my daughter got this printer that I'm recycling the box of for her birthday. Um, I hate these friggin' plastic filled, plastic air filled pockets, but they actually turned out to be quite perfect for making sure my little painting wasn't touching the sides of the box so um, again well, I guess when I um, get some of my own custom packaging made for my paintings I'll probably look at getting some of those um, compostable peanuts that you can just put in the garden and water and they go into the earth because I will need some kind of extra safety packaging to put in there with my paintings and I think they're about the only super environmentally friendly option for packaging, but feel free to let me know what you use or if you've got any other great alternatives in the comments, that would be hugely appreciated. Okay, so now that all of my packages are ready for posting, I'm just gonna get started on uh, another wholesale order that I need to work on. So just cutting out the fabric. I use, I have this one piece that basically is my template piece. So whenever I'm making deluxe wheat bags, I literally just pop that over the top and I know exactly what size to cut to. Now these little guys, when I'm selling them individually as a mini rice bag, which is like a little mini heat pack, I keep them in as a rectangle shape, but I also have the option to buy as a little juggling set, which is the strawberry, the pineapple and the watermelon design. So when I sell those, I just need to cut off the edges to make them fit the shape of the actual fruit and for this wholesale order I have three sets of these little three packs. Okay I've just got this next wholesale order all cut and ready to sew so that bee's already done. Two wheat bags, bee, bee wheat bags. I've got three sets of little fruit juggling bags which are basically mini rice bags that you can use as little juggling bags if you want. 
three little B mini rice bags and a set of six vintage fabric eye pillows. So that's this next wholesale order. But right now I am done with the studio. And I'm just gonna put this over here. So, so that's my little stack of orders for the post office today. <sighs> I've only been here for two hours, but it's actually really draining like sitting sewing and then standing and cutting so i'm gonna call it a day also because we're still in lockdown here i don't really like leaving my kids home all day by themselves for remote learning even though they're teenagers they're fine to stay at home by themselves but i'm gonna go home have some lunch let the dog out for a wee wee go to the post office and then i might come back this afternoon and sew this wholesale order otherwise it will be first thing tomorrow okay i've just gotten home chucked my little hoodie on need to deal with that freaking situation over there but for now, I've got a matcha tea and I am just going to sit here under my doona and edit my Leonie Dawson interview from yesterday so that I can get it uploaded onto the YouTube channel ASAP. I'm still using the app, the iMovie app, basically because I find it really hard to use the iMovie or any other program on my laptop. But once I get to 100 videos uploaded to my YouTube channel, that is my deadline that I have to start using a proper, like either Premiere Pro, which I do have on my laptop already because I have the Creative Suite or iMovie or Final Cut Pro. I think I'll go with Premiere Pro because I've heard it's really good and I'm paying for it anyway, so I may as well. Good morning, it's Thursday the 16th of September. I have just woken up, made myself coffee, taken puppy dog out for a wee. Now I have to head to the studio this morning, finish making that wholesale order that I left yesterday. And then I've got to cut 120 pieces of calico and we're going to take it to my printer because I'm putting a big order in with him for my wheat bag fabric because I'm just sick of only just having enough for the next couple of orders and then running out and having to get more prints done if I get a big wholesale order. I really want to have a good amount of stock because even though my wholesale orders have been quiet because Melbourne and Sydney have been in the lockdowns for ages now, it's mid-September, we're going to start getting Christmas orders especially as shops start opening up again in the next couple of months so I need to be prepared so I'm getting in early and I'm gonna get a heap of stock amazing coffee morning first hi Daniela she makes the best coffee she's set up at Rosebud Secondary College and she also teaches kids how to make coffee it's great I just got home from the studio. My dog is very happy to see me and of course wants some of my lunch. The sun is shining here, it's so beautiful. I'm not a winter person. Um, spring is a couple of weeks in here and it's just starting to get nice. She'd really like some of my lunch, wouldn't you? back at the studio really quickly just got to finish preparing this order so I know how much it's gonna weigh so I can send the invoice for my stockist my vintage eye pillows are all beautiful vintage fabrics and I fill them with a mix of brown rice and this beautiful organic lavender I wish you could smell it it's delicious good morning it's Friday I have been super lazy this morning. 
I thought I was waiting for a parcel from Australia Post from Spotlight, which is my big easels. Well, my desktop easels actually. And if I'm not here, they take them to the post office and it's such a pain in the ass to go and get these big boxes. So I was just waiting for the delivery guy to come, but I've just realized they're not coming today anyway. So I can get up and get my shit together and get to work. So today I need to work on some paintings and I also need to upload two printables, which I was supposed to do earlier in the week. I also need to work on a commission that I said would have options for this week and I also need to finish packing a wholesale order and getting that shipped off and I also need to cut some fabric all that fabric for my uh, printer so I can deliver it he can get going on printing my wheat bag designs I've got a lot to do today and it's 11 o'clock and Flossie's just chilling on the bed as per her morning routine just out of the shower, ready to do my day. I've just photographed this one and this drawing because I'm going to upload them to Illustrator, then edit and get them uploaded for my printables. So on my website and my Rondell Printables Etsy shop. And they're also gonna be part of my very first coloring in book that I will be self-publishing. So this is the commission that I'm working on. Her brief was that she wanted a love heart shape filled with flowers and some bees or a bee, depending on what I felt like doing. So I'm gonna give her two options. One with my little cutesy, more illustrated bee that is based on the design I use for my wee bags and my greeting cards. I love this little bee, so cute. Oh, cute. <laughs> So I'm just gonna do a couple of options for her and then send her through those sketches um, just to gauge that I'm on the right track. I don't do commissions very often, literally once or twice a year because I don't like them. Again, forgot to film when I went out. I just went out and bought my plant babies. I did a click and collect for a local plant nursery last night, very late last night. Whoops. So this, my friends, is $150 worth of beautiful new indoor plants. I'm supporting my local community. I'm supporting my local economy. It's totally fine, okay? I love this one. This was the most expensive and it's already really well established. So I was going to put this at my studio, but I'm not sure I might keep it at home. And my other favorite one is this guy here. So interesting. And I did have one of these, but I killed it. So hopefully this guy will stay alive. Good morning, lovely people. It is Saturday and I have had the biggest sleep in. It's nearly midday. I just, my sleep pattern's all out this week, but it's now school holidays here in Victoria. And I just remembered while I was making my coffee, I always get really tired at this time because normally it's an end of term thing, but the girls have been remote learning. So I don't know, I've just been staying up late watching YouTube so it's probably a contributing factor. Today on the agenda, I didn't do much work at all yesterday, literally like went no, I'm having a day off. I did a few things but what I need to do today is I've had feedback back from my client who I'm doing commission for. I gave her two options just in like sketched the ones that I did yesterday with the, the love heart flowers and bees. She liked both of them a lot. She likes one particular that she likes the more natural style bee but with kind of the background of the other one. Um, I thought I might just trace over it in procreate so I might just upload the photos of the sketches, trace the parts that she wants in Procreate, turn it into one drawing, then send it over to Illustrator and vectorize the line work. So I think I'm gonna do it that way, I think. Or I could just vectorize both images in Illustrator straight away and then just play around and combine that way, I'm not sure. I'll see. As well as wanting to get that commission finished this weekend, I also need to upload two printables, which I've been wanting to do all week and I haven't done it. So today is the day, people. 
Okay, so we're starting off with working on one of the printables. So this is a printable. I created the flower field circle when I was doing a TikTok live a few little weeks ago. And this is actually how my current client found, oh no, it's not, she saw something else, you know all that. Uh, okay, so we've live traced it in Illustrator. I'm playing around with the threshold and the paths and all that because I'm not loving how it's looking. Um, the, the lines are really not not what I want um, and there's a big blob there because I spilled a bit of water on the original so just playing around trying to get the line work correct um, then I'm going in to fix the little mistakes but to be quite honest with you I hardly ever use Illustrator anymore and I find that when I don't use it for a while, I forget. I forget everything that I knew. <laughs> it's so bad. So, mm, not loving it. In the end, I actually decide to give up on Illustrator. So I go into Procreate instead and actually end up going over the entire image, which took me about three hours but I find it so relaxing so it was totally fine So I've just saved this file. Um, I wanted to make it an A1 poster, but when you create on Procreate, it only goes up to A3. And I tried to vectorize it again by doing the image trace, and it just didn't, it's just not coming up lovely. So to keep the nice, beautiful lines, I'm just gonna make it an A3 printable. So I've saved that as a PDF, which will be the file I upload. And now I'm just going to save it as a JPEG, uh, JPEG or PNG? So I'll save it as a PNG so it's got transparent background so that I can put it in like a styled background for the Etsy shop and my website. Yay, all finished and uploaded. So I've got it uploaded to my website under printables coloring in pages. And I just went into uh, Canva and created these little images. I don't know if I love them to be honest, but meh. Done is better than perfect. I can always change them around later if I don't like them. I've also popped it up on my Etsy shop Rondell printables. Um, I have two Etsy shops. I have this one, which is just digital download stuff. And I also have my physical product Etsy shop. So that is the end of week one up vlog. Yay! I didn't get as much done as I was meant to. I got one printable uploaded. That's okay. I got all my orders out. I still didn't get the commission finished, but that's okay. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked this vlog. I'm so looking forward to doing a weekly art studio vlog from now on. I think it's going to be a great addition to my YouTube channel. Let me know if you have any questions at all and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you.